Hey, this is JP, and today on the Slam Lens, we're gonna take a look at what I think are two solid full-frame sensor cameras that do both great video and stills. We're gonna take a look at the Z6 II from Nikon and the S5 II from Panasonic. These two cameras come in at a marketplace where they do great video, they do great stills. I think these cameras are worth looking at comparatively to one another. So let's just take a look at how they function in both those categories. I've got Josephine here with me today. She's gonna to help us decide which one of these cameras she's gonna buy. Yep. You're gonna buy one of these cameras when we're done? I will, yeah. There you go. I wonder which one. Check out Pixba. It's a great solution for creators who wanna get a website up that looks awesome and fast. Let's break down the specs of these two cameras. First off, they both have full frame 24 megapixel sensors. Ty. Price wise, both these cameras come in around $1,996 or $1,997 within a dollar of one another. So they are pretty much equal when it comes to price. Both these cameras have 14 bit depth. Let's take a look at the picture quality between the Z6 II and the S5 II. You know, these are two of my most favorite cameras when it comes, uh, camera lines when it comes to picture quality. Panasonic has a beautiful image. Nikon, I think, has a beautiful image. And when I look at these two images side by side, they are both of them. Really, color rendition is, is spot on to me. Uh, the Nikon is just a slight bit more uh, magenta, just slightly. Uh, the Panasonic is very neutral. Uh, the Nikon is a little bit brighter. Uh, when I set them at the same camera settings, the Nikon seems to come out just a little bit brighter. But look at the color rendition on that spider checker. We get great color rendition across the board. The, the color feels correct to me. It doesn't feel overdone. The greens are very strong in the background on both of these cameras, but the, the skin tone looks correct to me. It feels comfortable. I think these are two great cameras. If I look in, punch in and just look at, uh, at the picture, how sharp they are, those 24 megapixel sensors, we just see really sharp, sharp images. I, I'm just very impressed. Uh, maybe the, can, the uh, Nikon looks a little bit sharper, but they are very close to one another. Let's take a look at the, uh, just the image without the, the uh, spider checker in there. And yeah, they are both really super sharp and great rendition. If I look here now at the, uh, um, this little metal plate that I love to take pictures of because it just gives me, I focus one focus point on the 500 and I can take a look at that and just look at how sharp they are. Uh, great color rendition. I don't know, these two cameras are head to head when it comes to picture quality. So there's a look at the image quality test. When it comes to image quality and sharpness between these two cameras, these two platforms, I think they are head to head. I'm going to give them a tie because I think they both look fabulous. Ergonomics. Let's look at the ergonomics of these two cameras. First off, the uh, Nikon Z6 II comes in at 1.35 pounds, whereas the Panasonic comes in at 1.45 pounds. So the Panasonic is slightly heavier, but just slightly. Uh, we do have on the Z6 II an SD card and a CF Express Type B card, which is going to give us faster refresh rates and faster uh, buffering. Whereas on the uh, Panasonic, we have two uh, dual slot SD cards. Uh, we have a 3.2 inch uh, monitor at 2,100,000 dot resolution. Whereas on the Panasonic, you have a three inch monitor with a 1,840,000 dot resolution. We have a tilt up screen with the Nikon. It does not flip out like the Panasonic does. And that flip out is super important if you're doing any kind of video. If you're going to do video of yourself, if you're going to put this camera into a tight space, you need that articulating flipping out, uh, flip out screen. They both have touchscreen, LCD touchscreens. Um, as far as the camera goes, I love the grip on the Panasonic. It gives me a place for my fingers. My little finger has a place to rest. Whereas with the uh, Z6 II, that little finger doesn't have a great place to rest. The body's a little shallower. I do love the fact that we have an LCD screen on the top of the Z6 II. Uh, which we do not have on the Panasonic. Panasonic has your just standard buttons. Panasonic is very much like an old school kind of film camera in that you have dials for your frames per second, you got dial for your different auto, mode, uh, auto modes, and you have three right across the front which give you your ISO white balance and then a compensation, a exposure compensation, or you can program that for something else. Both of these cameras have a wheel on the camera right side, allow you to get to it and roll it. Uh, it's interesting because uh, Nikon puts a little bump on the back of their camera. It keeps you from hitting that with your 
uh, finger, whereas on the uh, Panasonic, I hit that occasionally and can change my settings inadvertently, whereas it got a little bump there that keeps you from being able to get that on the, uh, on the Nikon. I love on the Nikon that you have these two little function buttons right here at your fingers, which allow you to program those for features that you want to use and have access to really quickly. And your hands on the grip, you can get right to it. Uh, the joystick on the back of each of these cameras is pretty accessible. I think it's a little more accessible on the Panasonic, a little lower on, my, on the uh, uh, Nikon Z6. Overall, I feel like we have a good combination in each of these cameras of buttons uh, that you can program, uh, old, more kind of old school type of uh, features on the Panasonic. It makes the Panasonic just a really nice uh, camera to use if you like to have your, your buttons and dials pretty much like the old DSLRs. I do love on the Panasonic that the uh, wheel in the front that allows me to change my aperture or whatever you assign it to is right where I'm shooting. So I'm shooting, I can roll that, I can shoot, I can roll. It's just really easy to use. Whereas on the, uh, I've got to come down really low here on the Z6 II to get to that, uh, that wheel in the front and it's just not as convenient for me. I think getting to your record buttons, a little bit of a stretch on the Panasonic. I've got to reach back if you're doing video. Whereas on the uh, Z6 II, you can hit it right here. It's very close. On the uh, Panasonic though, you can program so that you use your uh, trigger as the record button in video mode. So you can make that a function which makes that really easy to use and makes it work really nicely. For the strap, I love the fact that the Panasonic has fixed hard uh, spots for the strap. Uh, allow you to strap it, uh, whereas the uh, Nikon Z6 II has got the little rings you put things on. It's just much easier to use these in any kind of camera rig, uh, if you're going to use it on a gimbal and all that. I don't like these little floppy rings. I feel like it's kind of a, a design of the past. Everyone's gone to more the rigid kind of uh, loops to be able to put your straps and things on. I think that's a much, it's an advantage for the Panasonic. Who wins? It's hard to say because it depends on what you're shooting. So I'm going to give them a tie when it comes to ergonomics. Viewfinder resolution between these two cameras is very similar. We have 3,690,000 dot resolution on the Z6 II and on the Panasonic S5 II we have 3,680,000 dot resolution. They're very similar. You don't see a difference. Autofocus points. We have 273 autofocus points on the Nikon Z6 II and 779 autofocus points on the Panasonic S5 II. So when it comes to autofocus points, definitely the Panasonic wins. But the real test is how does it perform when you take it out and shoot? So let's take a look at that autofocus test right now for stills mode. The Nikon I'm shooting, I'm getting about 29-ish frames, each one of these tests that we do, and I'm losing about three, uh, well, three to four, around four images each time as she walks towards me. I'm losing about four. It seems to be that transition area as they get fairly close and it's getting a little closer to you. The autofocus is having a harder time pulling the focus as it gets up close. Uh, so I'm losing about, about four-ish on each one of them as I went through. Uh, when I look at the, uh, the Panasonic, I have a lot more images here. We're shooting almost uh, 55 images. And now that 55, I'm still, it's around the same, around three to four uh, that I'm losing, but I'm shooting 55 images. So it's coming up close. And again, that same area that the camera seemed to struggle with as you do that transition into uh, closer from kind of waist up to uh, face, close face. I lose a few in there, but it's 55 frames and I'm losing about uh, four to five. So we shot multiple tests on each of these cameras and it looks to me like autofocus wise in this test, they are functioning very similar to one another. So there's a look at the autofocus test. I think these two cameras perform very, very uh, close. I felt like the Panasonic edged out the, design, uh, the Nikon slightly. Jolene said she felt like it was a tie, so we're gonna give it a tie. We just started working with Pixpa on a new website. You know, it's a perfect solution for artists because it's easy to set up and you can get something up quickly. When I give an assignment to my students to create a website, it's a roadblock that is so hard to get past. Pixpa helps solve that because it's just easy to use. It's designed by artists to be able to showcase their work. There's over 150 templates you can use. They're beautiful templates that are artistic and current. Pixpa also gives you a way to deliver images to your clients through the galleries. You can either sell prints or sell digital images, it becomes a foundation to run your business through, which is so important for a creative person. Pixma has a very affordable monthly fee and they don't charge any kind of commission on the things that you sell through their site and their customer service is great. You can start with a free trial and see if you like it. Check it out in the description below. It's a great option for creatives who want to get a website up quick and good. Pixma. 
So let's take a look at continuous shooting of frames per second with these two cameras. Uh, on the Nikon, you get 14 frames per second up to 124 frames, whereas on the Panasonic, you get 9 frames per second up to 200 RAW or 300 JPEGs. I didn't find anything definitive about what the electronic uh, shutter is for the Nikon. I know it has an electronic shutter. I'm, I'm guessing from what I've read, it looks like it's 14 or better. Uh, but on the Panasonic, we know we get 30 frames per second up to 200 RAW and 200 JPEG. So if I compare these two as far as frames per second, I'm going to say it's definitely Panasonic's winner. We got that 30 frames per second, and I think that makes it very compelling. When it comes to autofocus and video mode on these two cameras, as you look at them two side by side here, as she comes towards me, they both can't seem to hold on to her face fairly well. When she turns around, there's a, you lose a little bit um, uh, with the uh, Nikon, but when she gets away from us, the Nikon jumps off just a little bit. We see it kind of lose the focus. The Panasonic seems to be staying on her better as she kind of comes and moves away from us. As she turns her head away from us, it seems to stay with her longer. And when I look at these two as far as autofocus in video mode, it feels like the Panasonic is staying on her just a little bit better. The Nikon seems to lose focus as she turns her head away from us a little bit. So there's the autofocus video test and it goes to Panasonic. Let's talk about the video capabilities of these two cameras. The Z6 II has a 422 10-bit at 4K, 24 and 30 frames per second. You can get a 60 frames per second, but it does come in a crop. You're going to crop in on that 60 frames per second, but it does give you 60 frames per second, which is nice to have. You do have N-Log. You also have 10-bit 422 uh, HDMI out, which gives you the ability to uh, record out to an Atmos recorder. Uh, on the Panasonic, we have H.264 and H.265 at 422 and 420, 8 and 10-bit. It uh, gives us the ability to do 6K on the uh, Panasonic, which is fabulous. Love the 6K. 6K at 24 and 30 frames per second. You do have 4K at 24 and 30 frames a second. As an external recording solution, you can get 12-bit at 6K for 24 and 30 frames a second. The one aspect of the Panasonic that I thought was really interesting, I wasn't sure I was going to like, but I've learned to really love and use here at the Slanted Lens, and that is the real-time LUT. That's taking the log, you're taking the V-log, and you're putting uh, Rec 709, they have several different uh, LUTs in the camera. You can load other LUTs that you can apply to the, uh, the uh, V-Log. And that just gives you the ability to have a log, which gives you a great dynamic range. You apply the LUT in camera, so it's baked into the footage. But it really is a great workflow solution. You can have that workflow solution where you're shooting on that real-time LUT. It gives you a beautiful image. We just shot and saw beautiful, beautiful images on this camera. And that's an option that's kind of new and unique to the Panasonic. These two cameras have great video capabilities, but I think Panasonic really is the video camera. Panasonic has been strong in this area for quite some while, uh, quite a while. The Panasonic also has open gate recording, which gives you the ability to record the entire sensor and allows you to reposition your framing. Also, is much easier to get a vertical out of that open gate recording if you're doing something for Instagram, and we are cutting for Instagram and TikTok, those kinds of things all of the time. So that's a great advantage that Panasonic has. So wrapping this up, when it comes to video, I think Panasonic's pretty hard to beat in this category. Between these two cameras, it definitely goes to the Panasonic. Image stabilization. Both these cameras have image stabilization. Let's look at that stabilization, how it works. Let's take a look at the test. When it comes to image stabilization with these two cameras, I've got it on a rig, so they're both on the same rig, so I'm walking with them at the same time, so they're getting the exact same motion. Um, and if I look at these two compared to one another, it's pretty hard to beat Panasonic stabilization. It is just very smooth. Uh, you see the, the uh, Nikon is, is really bouncing a little more and the Panasonic is much smoother as you go, as you look at these side by side. And I spin around her, you see it as I walk towards her, uh, it's a little less of that bounce in my step. Uh, with the Panasonic, whereas the Nikon is struggling a little bit. You also see the focus in this test. You can see how the focus kind of loses uh, her face a little bit in the Nikon, whereas in the Panasonic it stays with her just a little better. So there's the image stabilization test. Pretty hard to beat Panasonic on that one. When I look at that stabilization, the Panasonic is very smooth. Uh, actually, the Z6 did a great job, but it's just not quite as smooth. These are set up on a rig, so they're both being recorded at the same time, and you can feel a little more of the step in the Z6 II, whereas with the uh, S5 II, it's a lot smoother. I think the Panasonic is much smoother than the Nikon, and so it goes to the Panasonic. All right, let's look at the ISO comparison between these two cameras. Uh, we're gonna start off at 400, because one and 200, they're very similar. No reason to even look at them. Um, by the time that we get to 400, they're very similar cameras. 
Uh, maybe the Panasonic has a is a little bit has a little bit more digital noise. Uh, we take a look at the nose. That bridge of the nose is really important to look at because you see the color band that you have there, and you, you're going to see how the color builds in that nose uh, as it goes from the highlight to the shadow, and just what that little color band there. It's a little pinkish now. Got a little bit of yellow in it on the uh, Nikon. But let's jump up to the 800 and let's just see how they compare to 800. So we'll look at that band on her nose, and. We're getting a little bit of a band there, uh, but really back up here, if we look at the noise back in the background, um, the Nikon's just a tiny bit better than the uh, Panasonic, just a tiny bit, it seems like to me. When I look at it at 1600, look at that back in the background, I feel like that, uh, yeah, the Nikon's just giving me a slight bit, you know, the difference, Nikon is slightly brighter, when we do these at the same uh, exposure, and they're seeing a little bit of that, they are very similar to me at 1600, they, but maybe the Nikon's edging out the uh, Panasonic just barely. Uh, when we get up to uh, 3200, uh, certainly the noise is starting to build on both of them. Uh, feels a little bit like we have a, just a little better rendition on the Nikon. Look at that shadow transition and the color. We're starting to see yellow start to build here on the nose of the Nikon. Uh, the Panasonic's still hanging in there pretty good at that, in that color transition area. Let's go up to 6400, look at 6400, and we've got pretty heavy digital noise um, on both these cameras, but I think the Nikon's doing slightly better. Slightly better when it comes to digital noise, but I think the Panasonic is doing a little bit better when it comes to holding the color rendition and not getting that banding uh, from the highlights to the shadows. So let's go to 12,800. Now we got major digital noise everywhere, obviously. And uh, again, I think they're reacting about the same. We're getting just a little better uh, rendition of a little less digital noise with the Nikon, but we're getting a much stronger color uh, shift in the banding between the highlights and the shadows. So the Panasonic seems to be holding the color a little better. The Nikon seems to be holding the digital noise just slightly better. When I say slightly, these two cameras are super close together when it comes to this. We go 25,600. I mean, there is a lot of digital noise here, man. And again, I think the Nikon is slightly better when it comes to the digital noise, but I think uh, the, the uh, Panasonic is holding the color better in the transitions. And now we go up to the last one, which is 51,200. And everyone shoots at 51,200, don't they? All the time. Um, digital noise is crazy. They're both off the charts here. Uh, but the Panasonic is holding that, well, what color rendition there is. All right, there's a look at those two cameras very close together when it comes to digital noise and the ISO comparison. I think they're head to head. So there's the ISO capability test. Man, they were very close, but I'm gonna say the Nikon edged out the Panasonic just barely. Now let's take a look at the dynamic range test. First off, the Nikon is slightly brighter. Um, we took these straight through RAW without any sharpening, nothing like that at all. Straight through RAW so we can just look at the dynamic range uh, on a JPEG without any kind of manipulation. And right off the bat, with the Panasonic, it's holding the highlights in the background uh, a little better. Uh, it's really giving us nice open shadows and it gives us a nice dynamic range. Uh, the Nikon is a little more, like I say, bright. It's a little brighter in the background, but let's see what happens when we go to a minus one. Minus one should look really nice on both these cameras, and it really does. The minus one is really holding uh, all those uh, highlights in the background for the Panasonic really well, whereas with the uh, Nikon, I'm not holding those background. It's just not quite as open. If you look at even the detail inside the, uh, the slats of the uh, window inside, the white, just getting a little bit more detail of the Panasonic. If we go to minus two, uh, we're seeing a lot more, uh, a lot better detail on the uh, Panasonic in the background. It's just giving us a much better rendition than we see on the Panasonic. Um, go to minus three, you know, we're starting to now see some color shift a little bit. Um, and I mean, it's, it's amazing to me how good these look at minus three. I mean, are we seeing any kind of artifacting, any kind of digital noise? It's still pretty clean on both these cameras. You look into the background here and see how the background's reacting. At minus three, it looks pretty good. Let's go to minus four. At minus four, 
we are looking at uh yeah, they still, we are getting more digital uh, noise in the background on both the cameras. You see that happening and you see the digital noise is a little bit better on the Nikon, but the dynamic range seems to be holding better on the Panasonic. All right, let's go to plus one. This is always scary territory for a digital camera. Wow, the Nikon is just kind of blowing out and so is the uh, Panasonic a little bit. Look at the background on those highlights. You see this kind of uh, brown banding that starts to happen. You see that in the uh, in this little area in the background it starts to give us this kind of brown um, banding and it just they start to fall apart pretty bad here. So if we go to plus two so the transition between the highlights and the shadows is, is very very sharp now. Uh, you especially see it on the Nikon, so you get these really highlight areas and it goes to shadow areas and starts to posterize. It's a little better on the Panasonic, but neither of them are, are making a really great uh, comparison there. When you go to uh, plus three, the color has really shifted very yellow and there's just highlights are blown out. I mean, the Panasonic is holding better, uh, but still a terrible look as far as the uh, camera goes at that point. All right, so there's a look at the uh, dynamic range test. Looking at that test, I think the Panasonic definitely has a wider dynamic range than the Nikon. It just gives us great rendition, even as over and underexposed. I think it's slightly ahead of the uh, Nikon, almost all the way through that test. They are close, but the Panasonic's just a little better. So let's wrap this up. These two camera platforms have beautiful picture quality. I love the picture on each of these cameras. They're very similar when it comes to autofocus in stills mode. Um, they both, the Panasonic has two SD cards and you have a CF Express Type B. I thought that would have given us an advantage when it comes to frames per second, uh, but it really doesn't. I'm not seeing the buffering and the advantage that that CF Express Type B gives us other than it's an expensive uh, card that we have to purchase. So I'm kind of going back and forth in stills mode with these cameras. I think they're very much head to head when it comes to stills, but the area where these two cameras really separate, I think comes in the video. Autofocus and video, the Panasonic is much stronger. The uh, stabilization and video, the, the, uh, can the Panasonic is much uh, stronger. You've got that open gate recording. You've got the uh, real-time LUT. I think the Panasonic is really made as a strong video camera. And I think in that area, it really kind of excels and moves ahead of uh, the Nikon. I like the ergonomics of both these cameras, but I think the ergonomics of the Panasonic are slightly better for me. I just like the button placement and kind of that more of a DSLR type of approach, which makes it really fast to work for me. And I can see exactly what I'm doing. I think that's really strong. When it comes to the Nikon, I think the ergonomics are good. I don't think it's a camera that uh, suffers when it comes to ergonomics at all. Great button placement. I think it's a wonderful camera. So for me, when I look at these two cameras, I just think I get a full package for that same price range. I get a great video camera, a great stills camera with the Panasonic. And you'll have to decide which one works best for you. But if you like this review, check out some of the other reviews we have of other cameras and you keep those cameras rolling and keep on clicking.